I especially like the Burger King parking lot stage. I do feel bad for the customers though. Poor guy is just trying to get his food and we're invading the whole area. This guy is just trying to turn out of the driveway. What's going on guys? This is Poger coming at you with another video. So I'm actually going to be talking about some games that were published by Burger King. Yup, here they are. These are actually real games too, published by Burger King. Who would have thought? So let me know in the comments, what would you say is your all time favorite burger joint? It can be anything, it doesn't have to necessarily be fast food, it could be Red Robin, it could be a local burger place near where you live. Feel free to let me know. If I were to pick a favorite, it's definitely gotta be Five Guys. So anyway, let's get right on to the video. In the fall of 2005, Burger King was looking for ways to connect with younger audiences. Six years earlier, they came up with the Big Kids Meal, which was meant to cater to preteens by offering larger portions than the regular kids' meals. Burger King realized that gaming was actually a great way to target that particular age group, so Burger King contacted Microsoft, expressing interest in publishing games for their platform. When Ross Erickson, who was a portfolio manager for Xbox Live Arcade, was notified of what Burger King wanted to do, he contacted Philip Oliver. Philip was one of the Oliver twins who were responsible for the Dizzy games. Oliver was the head of Blitz Game at the time and didn't have funding as an independent developer, so when Burger King expressed interest in publishing games, Oliver jumped on the opportunity and his crew began development. Originally, the games were going to be made for Xbox Live, but Burger King wanted the games to have a physical release so that they could be sold at Burger King locations. So during development, Philips company and Microsoft worked closely with Burger King to make sure that the games met their demands. And Burger King prioritized making sure all the characters that were going to be in the games were portrayed the way they wanted them to be. On November 19th, 2006, the games were released. It's worth mentioning that around this time, the mascot for Burger King was the king, and he was actually pretty cool. Always had a little smile on his face, no matter what. It's too bad he isn't around anymore, but I'm glad these games came out when he was popular. In the commercials, he was always in a rough situation, but he would give away a burger and suddenly everything was okay. Wow, dude knows how to make it right. <laughs> I hereby find the defendant guilty of first degree murder. He will face life in prison without the possibility of parole. I am kind of hungry. <laughs> anyway, the games were $3.99 each if you purchased a value meal. Since the games were so cheap and they were published by Burger King, you might think that these games are probably not very good, right? Well, let's give them an honest chance. First game we're going to look at is Pocket Bike Racer. You get a nice little logo at the beginning. The title screen shows the king cart riding around town. What kind of idiot would stand in front of a green screen like this? A lot of people say the graphics are a step down from the more premium Xbox games, but I do think this game has nice visuals. I especially like the Burger King parking lot stage. I do feel bad for the customers though. Poor guy is just trying to get his food and we're invading the whole area. This guy is just trying to turn out of the driveway. You can pick between several Burger King themed characters like the Whopper Jr., the King, Subservient Chicken, and a few others. I actually admire the roster they decided to include, especially the Whopper Jr. There's numerous gameplay variations. There's hardcore racing, where you race without items. Pretty standard. You can drift when making turns. It's sort of like Mario Kart, where you get a small boost in speed every time you perform the trick. 
The stages do have some variety which I like, and there's plenty of product placement here. I'm not a fan of how linear the stages are though. Some stages do have alternate paths, but most of the time you're just driving in the same places. Anyway, the other gameplay mode is Ultimate Cone Trial. Here items are on and you have to be the first person to drive in between a certain amount of cones. It's not all that interesting however, because all of the cones are in the same predetermined spots, and none of them are hidden, they're all just within the visible raceway. I feel like this could have been better if it were more of a scavenger hunt, where the cones are in hard to find places. It would have promoted exploration, but instead they're just all in front of you. Overall, this mode gets boring really fast. The other gameplay mode is Battle Royale, where you have to hit the most kart riders with items in order to win. This one isn't too bad, but the game uses the same stages as the racing mode, and everyone starts in front of the finish line like it's a race. Shouldn't we all start off separated? Mario Kart has a battle mode as well, but they don't use the racing stages for players to battle on, they use more open stages where you have more room to explore and strategize. Using racing stages for a battle royale mode really doesn't work. Overall, this could be fun if you have a few friends over, but not as good as it could have been. When you beat a certain mode, you unlock new carts and other engine classes for the gameplay modes. So it's cool that you get some replayability. However, there's only five stages in the game altogether. So once you've played all five, there's really not much content after that. I have to admit though, the music is really good. It feels like something you'd hear in Tony Hawk. That's a compliment by the way. Overall, if I compare this to a premium Xbox game, this wouldn't be very good, but for a $4 game this is more than acceptable. They could have just put in a kart racing mode and called it a day, but instead they added more features to give it some replayability. Again, at a higher price point this type of game wouldn't fly, but at $4 this one really isn't that bad. Next up is Big Bumpin'. I wasn't sure what to expect with this one. We already have a kart racing game, why do we need a bumper car game? The title screen is also kinda lame. This is the best you could do? I mean the box cover looks alright, why couldn't they use that instead? If you couldn't tell, this is a carnival themed game. Maybe I'm easy to impress, but I do admire the graphics here. When the stages start, you see the camera pan out and you notice all the amusement park rides in the background. It's a nice touch. They didn't have to do that, but they did. I wasn't sure what to expect with this game. The other one was third person, but I was kind of disappointed to see that this is a top-down perspective. You need a microscope to see what's going on, and my first time playing I didn't even know who I was controlling on screen. But controlling your character is easier than I thought, thankfully. Just point the left analog stick in whatever direction and your character will move there. I'm glad they didn't go with tank controls like I thought they were originally going to do. So while I do admire the graphics, I also think they are a little too dark. Had it been a little brighter and more colorful, maybe I could see the characters better and the top down point of view wouldn't bother me as much. Like with Pocket Bike Racer, you do have multiple gameplay modes. There's Last Man Standing. The title says it all, you have to be the last person remaining in order to beat the stage. You can attack your opponents with items and by bumping into them, but I found it easier to just run away. I found this mode to be pretty difficult. I had a hard time lining up my attacks right. Most of the time I would try to bump my opponent, I would miss and then be put in a disadvantageous situation. Overall this mode got boring fast. There's also Own the Puck where you have to keep away the hockey puck from the others as long as possible. When you touch the hockey puck, it will change to your color, and the longer the puck is your color, the more points you will accumulate. This one I actually had fun with. Most of the time, all the players will barricade the puck, but my strategy is to hit it away from the others so it stays my color for longer. A lot of the problems from Last Man Standing still remain. It's hard to see which character I am sometimes, and the graphics are dark. There's even a mode where you actually play hockey. 
whoever makes the most goals in three minutes wins. It's teams of two, and there's no goalie, so if both players are going after the ball, your side is going to be left wide open. Like with Own the Puck, I actually enjoyed this one, and this would be the perfect minigame if you have friends over. All the characters from Pocket Bike Racer are back. The character models look great, honestly, but unfortunately you get to barely see them because the game is so zoomed out most of the time. There is some product placement in this game, but it's not near as much as Pocket Bike Racer. Although some of the minigames are fun, there's much less content in this game than Pocket Bike Racer. There's 10 stages total, and after googling it, the only unlockables are alternate colors for the bumper cars. Lame. As we discussed, there are different gameplay modes, which is better than nothing, but there's only so many ways you can polish bumper cars. You can easily play all of the stages and every minigame in less than a half an hour. Overall, there's far less content in this game than Pocket Bike Racer, and it feels redundant to have another driving game with items. I was disappointed with this one, to be honest. But for $4, I guess this gets a pass, but it's definitely not as good as the other one. The final game that Burger King published was Sneak King. Fortunately this is not a driving game, it's a stealth game, except instead of sneaking up on people and beating them up, you sneak up on them and give them a whopper. What? That's the game? It's just like in the commercials. Do I have to explain how weird this looks? You can even creep around on someone's property, and they don't care as long as they get a free whopper. I'm telling you, this guy gets away with everything. Anyway, you start off in a hub area where you can select whatever mission represented by a rotating piece of paper. The mission is usually something simple, give three hungry construction workers a breakfast sandwich, something like that. You have to sneak up from behind and give hungry customers a whopper without them catching you in their field of vision, which is represented in blue. You can also hide in dumpsters, crates, and logs, and hope that a hungry worker walks up near you. Some missions actually require you to give out food from these hiding spots. The more hungry people you feed in a row, the more your points will be multiplied. If a worker catches you in their field of vision, you don't automatically lose or anything, but your multiplier resets back to zero. Now, that might not seem important, but some missions require you to reach a certain amount of points in order to pass, so not getting caught is actually very important sometimes. If a worker gets hungry for too long, they'll pass out and cannot be fed. This doesn't count against you, it just wastes time on the clock, and some missions have a time limit, so you need to be fast. Speaking of fast, your character is anything but. Half the time, I miss out on hungry customers because he moves so slow. Come on, get there already! But I understand he's supposed to be sneaky or whatever. This game has some of the most aggressive product placement of the three. Sure, the first game contained various Burger King foods, but this game is more in your face about it. You literally give out Burger King food in order to win. With that said, I like it. This is actually what he did in the commercials, so this is actually a very good fit for a game. So I'm going to sound like a broken record right here, but the graphics are actually really well done. A lot of detail went into each of the stages, even in the backgrounds. I like that the king delivers various foods, including coffee, chicken fries, whoppers, croissant witches, and more. But this game is not without its flaws. For one, the camera is pretty bad. You can control the camera with the right analog, which is nice, but sometimes it's difficult to adjust the camera the way you want it. When hiding in this crate, for an example, it's impossible to readjust the camera to face in front of you. When climbing ladders, the camera messes up pretty bad. The camera in general just needs some work. So this game is actually fun at first, but the missions do get repetitive. You're usually doing the same thing over again, and it gets boring fast. One minor complaint that I have, when you're done with a mission, whether you pass or fail, the game transports you back to the beginning of where you started the game. I wish it at least gave you the option to start near the mission so you don't have to walk as far. 
So just like with the other games, there really isn't much content, but it's at least better than Big Bumpin'. There's 4 stages total and they each have 20 missions. It's not much, but those 20 missions are going to take a good amount of time to get through. Unfortunately, none of the other characters are here. There's no subservient chicken or Whopper Jr. You only play as the king, and it's only a one player game too. A bit of a bummer. So I do think this game is the most original of the three, and I admire the creativity. Overall, this game definitely passes the $4 test. It's a fun way to kill some time, but there isn't much to it and it doesn't stay fun for long. So even though I do find Sneak King to be decent, it's not my favorite Burger King game. That title goes to Pocket Bike Racer. If I had a few friends over and could play any of the three games, it's definitely going to be this one. This game has the most content of the three, and it's the most enjoyable in my opinion. Sneak King is close behind, and the worst of the bunch is definitely going to be Big Bumpin'. They obviously ran out of ideas here, and I got the least amount of enjoyment from this one. So let's talk about the rarity of these games. You would think that since these are Burger King games and these are exclusive to Burger King, that these are probably pretty rare now, right? No! You're not going to believe this. You can get all three games for $6 sealed. Are you kidding me? That's less than they were when they came out. Why so cheap? Did they have a stockpile of these games that went unsold? So anyway, are these games worth it? At $6? Sure. You're not going to be out of that much money and these games are alright. I certainly wouldn't buy any of these if they were like 40 bucks or more. So, in conclusion, I think it's interesting that Burger King came out and published some games. None of them had a whole lot of content and were kind of mediocre, but they're playable and for the price point, it definitely gets my approval. A special thank you goes out to Sama Sutra for the interview with Philip Oliver. Most of the information from this video came from that. I apologize for how long this video took to make. It took way longer to get through all three games than I originally thought. I just wanted to make sure these games got fair reviews. So anyway, with that said, thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like rating, and if you haven't already, drop a subscription. Have a good one, you guys.